Hey you guys, it's Lauren. Welcome back. So today's video is going to be my picks for the best and worst skincare of 2019. And I'm super excited because these are some of my most favorite videos on YouTube to film and to watch. I think I watched Emily Noel's, what does she call them, her Emily Awards? I think I watched them like five times throughout the year. I just think they're so fun, which I'm very sad by the way. She just announced that she's not doing them this year. So bummed about that. But anyway, I'll be scrolling through all my other favorites because I just, I can't get enough of these videos. So I hope you guys enjoy these as well. I try to do my best to just narrow down to my favorites and pick. I do have a couple from each category, but there's some categories where I only have one pick because sometimes I feel like it's a little daunting when you have all these products thrown at you. And like, I know for my favorites, I just, I'm just like, tell me, tell me your favorites. I just want to know what's, what's the one that you really use all the time. So I did my best. I really tried to narrow it down. So yeah, lots of products to get through today. So we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so this year has been like the year of skincare for me. I just, I've just been obsessed. I've always been a skincare junkie, but even more so these days, I, I think it's the whole aging thing. I turned 35 this year, so I'm starting to notice some more fine lines, just some more, I don't know, my skin tone's not as even as it used to be. So I'm really trying to look into ingredients. I'm really, I'm trying to avoid certain things. I'm just, I'm just really paying attention more so than ever these days. I'm definitely not an expert by any means. I am a nurse, but I'm, my specialty is not dermatology. I work with babies. I'm actually a NICU nurse, but I have to tell you, I'm a little obsessed with dermatology. Anytime any of my patients have a derm consult, I'm like, my ears are like perk up a little bit. Usually half the time we're too busy if a consult comes to the bedside, but I just find it so interesting how skin regenerates and I don't know I've really just been taken an interest in it recently so and of course I'm a product junkie so both of those things combined it just gets me so excited but okay let's get into the products so these are these are some holy grails for me some repurchases from last year I think some even repeats for my best in skincare from last year and yeah some things that are gonna be just staples in my routine some of these things are so good definitely worth the money I really only have a few pricier products in here I'm definitely finding that more money doesn't always equal better quality and yeah it's just about the ingredients for me but yeah, some really affordable options in here, some Korean skincare. I've definitely gotten into Korean skincare recently. All right, but enough blabbering. Let's get on to the products. So we'll start in sequence. We'll start with cleansing bombs, and we'll go to, to SPFs. So I'll go in order of how I apply these. So cleansing bombs, my definite favorite for the year. I will repurchase this, definitely. I'm, I have a second option for a cleansing bomb because the second option is becoming a new favorite. But this is definitely like my ride or die, holy grail status cleansing balm. This is my new favorite. This is by Pixie and Caroline Hirons. This is her double cleanse. This is the collab she did with them. The one side is a solid cleansing oil or a solid cleansing balm. And then the other side is a cleansing cream. The cleansing balm is amazing. It's so emollient, but it doesn't leave any residue on the face. It breaks down makeup so easily. It washes off nice and clean and it leaves your face just clean and refreshed and not not that like tight dry feel after you cleanse it leaves your face feeling actually moisturized which i love it doesn't feel like pore clogging like a lot of cleansing bombs can it just your skin just feels so refreshed and clean after using this and you actually i don't even feel like i need this cleansing cream next to it but so much so where i could just be good with step one like i don't even need step two step two is great it's a nice creamy cleanser it does have a peptide in it so it's nice and it's hydrating it feels i don't know it just feels like a juicy cleanser on the skin this doesn't do anything more for me than what the cleansing the step one does for me this is just so great and actually my my wish for caroline it would be amazing if she just packaged step one in a tube form. That would be amazing. You really don't get much product on the side of this. I I flew through this. I actually, I put it away. I didn't use it for a while and I went back to it and I'm like, oh my gosh, I really went through that. And I only used it, I think I used it like maybe a month or two. And yeah, but it's, oh, it's great. It's so worth it. Give us a big size, Caroline and Pixie. That would be amazing. It's actually fragrance free. I feel like it's hard to find a fragrance free product from Pixie as well. So I appreciate that. And it's just great. It's nice and hydrating. And it just leaves the skin clean and it takes your day off. So my favorite was definitely the Pixie, but I have to give an honorable mention to the Hemish All Clean Balm. This is so great. This has like thousands of reviews on YesStyle's website and I totally get why. This is such a hyped up product. It does a job. It takes off everything. But again, like the Pixie, it doesn't leave a residue. It makes your skin just nice and hydrated. But because the base of this is shea butter, it's a little less oily, just a tad less oily than the Pixie Double Cleanse. This has a lot of different oils in here. The big one in here is sun 
sunflower oil, which another thing that my skin loves. Sunflower oil is great for repairing your skin's barrier. This is a little bit more moisturizing for me, a little bit more silky. This is nice and smooth on the skin. It really does the job, but I just wanted to throw this in because I love this too. It washes off cleanly. It doesn't leave a residue, but I just like the moisturization factor from this, but I'll repurchase this once I'm finished with this. So yeah, they're my two favorite bombs for the year. And then next up, let's move to an essence. So no surprise, I talked about this in a couple recent videos videos. This is by Makehoop. This is their raw sauce. Now this is, the base of this is a maple water. It's actually, I think, I think it was a 93% concentration of maple water, which I read that maple water actually has smaller molecules than just regular old H2O. So it can really penetrate the skin. It really hydrates the skin. And oh my gosh, does it ever. It just packs in the hydration. It just gives such a beautiful glow to the skin in the most just like a dewy hydrated way your skin just glows after using this I usually use that at night after cleansing but there's some days in the morning where I use it as just like a refresher in the morning because it just feels so great on the skin it just wakes up the face and I should say there is fragrance in here but it is the most pleasant smelling skincare product that I've ever tried. I don't know if I would have necessarily purchased it if I knew there was fragrance in it, but the fragrance actually adds to the experience for me. So yeah, I really love that product. All right, and then let's move on to serums. So at nighttime, I usually, I'll use a moisture serum, and then on the nights when I'm not using a moisture serum, I'll use a like lactic or glycolic, some type of, some type of chemical exfoliant. But, so uh, let's talk about the two moisture serums that have been just my favorites, my go-tos for the year. Let's first talk about this one by COSRX. This is the Triple Hyaluronic Moisture Ampule. This is a newer line from COSRX. This, the packaging looks a little different from their standard packaging. It's in a glass ampule. But this hyaluronic acid is the most pleasant serum. It is so silky going onto the skin. It's not, I find a lot of hyaluronic acids leave, they feel good initially and then they leave some like almost like a mask like feeling. They're a little bit flaky. Some of them don't play well with sitting underneath makeup, but I can use this during the day and it sits really well underneath makeup. It doesn't pill or flake. Everything is just smoother and somehow brighter. It's just a great hyaluronic acid. I love it. It definitely gets huge points for me for, you know, just absorbing well into the skin it's quick absorbing so it's my favorite hyaluronic acid serum now another moisture serum I wanted to throw this in here too because I'll kind of sometimes I'll combine both of these and I just find the combination is great you definitely can get enough moisture from just using one of these but together they're just oh, magic they're just so good but this is the I unique I think that's how you pronounce it the beta glucan power moisture serum this is another thing I've been talking about recently I'm sorry I apologize if like you're done with hearing about this but this is just so great I am obsessed I, I said before this is something that I don't know I feel like I would see on Lisa Vanderpump's vanity I feel like she always has like the fanciest products but it's not expensive. It's just really a great affordable serum. Beta Glucan is becoming huge in Korean skincare. I feel like they're way ahead with their ingredient research, but Beta Glucan is actually, it's a polysaccharide. It's, kind of, it's like a carbohydrate. Usually it's actually known for lowering your cancer risk, your cholesterol risk if you actually eat it, but it's great for your skin as well. It somehow, I don't really know the pathophysiology on how it works, but somehow it actually smooths out your skin. It packs in the moisture. It's super nourishing. So yeah, a lot of good science behind this. So I really appreciate that. And it really does. It it's backed up by the results. My skin just like drinks this up. It's really quick absorbing and it gives the most, it gives that like glass like skin appearance, but it doesn't stick around. It just, you feel your skin like just sucking the stuff in. I just love the formula too. It's kind of has that stringy consistency. It reminds me a little bit of the Cosrx Snail Mucin Serum, but it's thinner than that. You can see it's like kind of runny. Oh, do you see that moisture and that glow, that dewiness? It just, oh, it's great. It feels so great on the skin. And supposedly beta-glucan is supposed to be really, um, it, it has anti-inflammatory properties as well. So if you're sensitive, it may calm your redness. It's just, it's a great all-around ingredient. I just love it. I want to research some more products with beta-glucan in it because I'm just pleasantly surprised by that serum. I'm just obsessed. I will repurchase it. My favorite for the year. Okay, and then probably the priciest product in my list of recommendations is by Sunday Riley. This is their Good Jeans. 
So this is probably, this is the most money I've ever spent on a skincare product. I, I almost returned it when I first bought it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really worth it. Do I really need this? But I could not put this down when I first got this. And I, since I actually got this through Hello Ava, I'll like leave them down below. They actually, I haven't talked about them in a while, but they're a curated skincare service that is really great. And you can get 30% off of my code. I'll leave it down below. It is affiliate just so you guys know. But anyway, they, I just wanted to be transparent. They sent me this bottle out. But I would definitely, I purchased my first bottle with my own money and I would definitely repurchase this again. This product is like a facial in a bottle. It's almost like Botox in a bottle. The, what this does for your skin is just remarkable. I don't know. It's it's a lactic acid serum and which you can find there's a ton of lactic acid serums on the market but i haven't found those instant results in almost anything else i did i talked about i compared this with the ordinary lactic acid serum in a video i'll link that down below and i did get the same results but there's no denying the instant like firmness you get from this the instant smoothness the brightness it's just amazing. I always say this right before I have an event because it really does wonders for your skin. It just smooths everything out. It, I really notice a difference with my melasma with that. Try to get, they, Sunny Riley has so many kits where you can get a smaller size of that because I know a lot of people that are sensitive may not get along with that. It does have lemongrass in it, which um, bummer is a natural fragrance that can be irritating to the skin. I wish that wasn't in there. Like why do they have to put fragrance in every freaking thing? <laughs> but yeah, I do. I love that serum and yeah, there's some Something. It's strong, but I've never gotten irritation from it. Lactic acid can actually act as a humectant, so it can actually plump out the skin. So you really, I actually, my skin feels moisturized from it. It's moisturized and bouncy. Probably my favorite skincare, skincare product is Good Jeans. I'm just obsessed. All right, then let's talk about eye creams next. I've definitely been obsessed with eye creams recently. I don't always, I'm pretty picky with them. I, if I'm gonna love it, I need them to have a thick formulation. I almost like a balmy consistency because let's be honest, we could all just like put our moisturizer a little higher and you're gonna get the same effects from an eye cream. But there's some that work so well and just do a great job at smoothing and hydrating my under eyes. There's some that I found and I just, now I know I just don't wanna live without them. So eye creams are definitely a must in my skincare routine, but I have been loving this one by Benton. This is probably the best buy out of all these products. The ingredients are great and you get so much product in the full size. They have a travel size available as well. So if you want to try this, pick up the travel size. I think the travel size is like five to eight dollars. It's so, so affordable. It's just amazing. So many good things in here. There's actually galactomyces is one of the main ingredients and that is found in the so highly overpriced brand SK2. It's found in their essence and I love the story behind the galactomyces ingredient. So apparently galactomyces is a yeast that's found in sake and they found that the hands of these sake brewers were coming out even smoother than their faces. These, these guys I guess that were helping in the brewing making process had these like baby soft hands and they somehow attributed it to the galactomyces yeast. So that's how it became, you know, this big ingredient and it's huge in it, Korean and it, a lot of Asian skincare brands and it really does. There's something about this, this eye cream. There's also ceramides in here, which is going to help to restore your skin's barrier, help to hold moisture in. There's a peptide, which peptides can act as a humectant. So, so many good things in here. And like I said, you can get the travel size for like pennies and the consistency is amazing. Let me zoom in on this so you guys can see. See how when it comes out, it just... You can tell how it has this thick, almost balmy, like buttery consistency. It's great. It's a great formulation for an eye cream. I'm just so excited about it. It just smooths everything out, it hydrates, and just, I love it. This is gonna last me forever. You definitely don't have to get the full size. Go for the travel size, you won't be disappointed. And then my other favorite for the year is this one by Indy Lee. This is the Candula Eye Balm. This is great because it literally, I was talking about how the other ones, like almost a balmy consistency. This is even more, more so. This is a thick, almost like a Vaseline consistency, even thicker than Vaseline. It's a little bit more stiff. So it sits so well underneath the eyes and I just love it for any like flakiness I'm having. I can get so much texture and flakiness and just dry skin patches like on the sides of my nose and the inner corners of my eyes. This smooths everything out. I can put it on the night before and I wake up with a smooth, hydrated skin and those flaky areas are just kind of wiped out. I was hesitant to include this because I'm not sure what Indy Lee is doing. I don't know if I'm discontinuing this, but it's not on Sephora anymore. I did find it on Neiman Marcus, of all places, kind of random, but it is still on there if you're interested in it. I think it's great. The base of it is actually a beeswax and I heard, I think it was on 
I think it was on a podcast, there was a dermatologist on there and they were talking about how beeswax is a great natural humectant. So I thought that was really interesting and yeah, it does, it really hydrates. I just, I love it. All right, and then the vitamin C for the year for me is by Tarte, this is their Youth or Dare Serum. By far, like my new favorite vitamin C. This is everything. I was just such a fan of this. Tarte just kills it with their skincare. They, I think they're one of the most underrated skincare brands because I, let's, I mean, they're known for their makeup, but they really do make great skincare. This is an unfragranced vitamin C, which I appreciate. And this has glycolic acid in it as well. So you're gonna get some exfoliation from this. And the ascorbic acid is your gold standard L-ascorbic acid in here. It's second on the ingredient list. I know a lot of people have a gripe with this because the ascorbic acid percentage isn't listed. But for me, I see results from this. I see brightness. I see even firmness from this. So, I don't know, I'm confident that it's working and it's definitely on the ingredient list, so it has to be a high percentage. And I actually DM'd Tarte about this to ask them why they, why they don't disclose the percentage. They said it's to protect their proprietary formulation. I don't know, I, that could just be BS, but maybe it is, maybe they just don't wanna disclose it. But like I said, the results speak for themselves and it's second on the list, so I don't know. It doesn't bother me, but it would be nice to know. Like, I don't know why they can't just release it. But anyway, it's just really great. It makes your skin so glowy. And I don't know if that's the vitamin C action, the glycolic, but all I know is when I apply this, it gives almost an instant, like, glowy look to the skin. But even after I wear it throughout the day and at the end of the day, my skin just looks, like, brighter and even. It's one of those serums that really has those, like, almost instantaneous results. I The immediate, that first week I was using it, I knew I was gonna love it, and I knew it was gonna be a staple. All right, so we're getting down to the wire here. Before we get into SPS, let's talk moisturizers. Moisturizers are like my favorite skincare product. I'm just, I just love them. And I think it's, I mean, this dry skin girl needs her moisturizer, and I'm just obsessed with finding that like nice, intense, rich, luxurious moisturizer. And I've definitely found it in these two products, and I'm so excited. But first, let's talk about the newest one to my collection. I This is by Verse, so this is the new skincare brand at Target. When I saw the details of this brand, the prices, the active ingredients, I just was so excited, and I wanted to try everything. I started with this cream. I purchased this with my own money at the beginning of December, and I've been loving this. And then they actually sent me out some products, and I, I'm so excited. I'm going to do a whole brand review. Could not be more excited about this brand. This moisturizer has to be my favorite, and it's going to be my go-to. I'm so excited now I have a backup of it. But it is the Skin Soak Rich Moisture Cream. But what I love about this, it's a no-frills moisturizer. It has good ingredients. It's fragrance-free. It does the job. Moisturizes my skin. It really, it's occlusive enough. It's not, not too occlusive where it feels heavy on the skin. It absorbs well. My skin feels so soft after using this. The ingredient list is super small, and actually on the back of the jar packaging, you can see, I know Lauren, they can't see because you're so far away. Let me show you guys this list. Here's the ingredient list right here. Super tiny, but there's sodium hyaluronate in here. There's, what else is in here? There's squalene, I love squalene. That's a skin identical ingredient. Great for dry skin. Also red algae extract. Red algae is actually, I feel like Dr. Dre has been talking a lot about marine extracts and how they're great for plumping out the skin, for calming the skin. So yeah, just really great things in that moisturizer. It is just a great brand. I love, love that moisturizer. My new go-to, the price is right. I think it's 17, 18 dollars. So yeah, love that. And then for high-end moisturizer, this is a repeat from last year, but this is by Biosense. This is their squalene, speaking of squalene, squalene and Omega Repair Cream. There's squalene obviously in here, and then there's also ceramides, great skin barrier ingredient, and then also there's shea butter in here as well. Like I said, my dry skin loves shea butter. This, there's just something about this. This is just the most, one of the most luxurious feeling moisturizers that I've ever felt. It's definitely thicker than the Verse Cream, but it still sinks into the skin and feels just so almost like a velvety texture on the skin. So moisturizing, so hydrating. The one negative to this, it smells <laughs> so stinky. It has the worst smell to it. It almost smells like rubber tires, but, yeah, oh yeah, it's bad. But I can appreciate a moisturizer without, that's not covered up by fragrance. So if you can stand stinky smell, it's an awesome moisturizer, one of my favorites. I repurchased this in the fall with the VIB sale and I will 
always repurchase this. Should I show you these creams side by side? Yeah, let's do that. All right, I don't even know if there's a point to this because they look exactly the same, but this is the Biosense. It's a little stiffer, I don't know if you can tell, and then the Versed is just a little bit thinner, a little bit creamier, but still, just like the name says, it's super rich, and yeah, they're both just as hydrating. The Biosense is just a little bit more occlusive, but yeah, both of them are just great. They do the job. Oh, wow, that was super bright. But they both do the job, and yeah, just... I love them. I'll repurchase them both. So yeah, really excited about them. All right, last but not least, let's talk about SPFs. I, this was really hard to narrow down. I have a lot of favorites. These are my top two. I think, I think down at the bottom in my links, I'll do some honorable mentions because like I said, this, it was hard to narrow down, but I tried to only pick the favorites. But these two sunscreens are the ones that I reach for the most during the year. And I think it's because they just work the best underneath makeup. Josie Marin is a close, I think that one's maybe third on my list, the Tinted SPF of 47, but I tend to reach for that one on my no makeup days. These I use all the time and they just work so well underneath foundation. But the first one is the Comfy Water Sunblock in an SPF of 50. This is by the brand Purito. I love this because it's so lightweight. It just absorbs into the skin really nicely. It doesn't leave a white cast. I actually, it's almost a little too lightweight. I do crave a little bit more moisture when I wear this. I actually, I make sure I have some, a good moisturizer underneath this. But the reason I love this is, like I said, it works well underneath foundation. It's not thick and heavy. If you have oily skin, I think you would even like this. It's just, it's just awesome. And there's actually skincare ingredients in here. There's niacinamide, so you can get some skin brightening from this. It's awesome. There used to be actually citrus oil, but the brand took it out because of the reviews, which I think is great. I mean, how many brands actually do that? So very cool of them. I just, I love that sunscreen. It's just great and lightweight. I love the formulation. And then my second, which ones do I like better? I think I actually like the Super Goop a little bit better because it's a little bit more moisturizing. But this is Super Goop's Unseen Sunscreen. This is in an SPF of 40. This is a great, it has almost like a primer-like consistency. Think Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. That silicone feel, that like slippery feel. If you have dry skin, this is just amazing. It actually hydrates the skin. If you have oily skin, I think this would be too heavy for you. But I love this because it's actually, it literally fills in your pores because of that silicone consistency. It's just really emollient and silky on the skin. It really does have smoothing capabilities. It, smooths out texture, I love the consistency of it, and I just, I like that it works as a primer and I get that moisturization from it. And it doesn't have that like chemical sunscreen smell, so yeah, this is just one of my favorites. All right, so that concludes my best of the year. Now let's talk about Womp Womp, the worst skincare of the year, for me anyway. They might work for you, but these products, yes. The ingredients, some of the ingredient lists were crap, they just dried out my skin, the formulations were also crap. Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and get into it. So the first product is by Pixi. This is their Phenomenal Gel. Not so phenomenal. This just was, first of all, it's a kind of, it's a pricey moisturizer for what's actually contained in here. There's not any great like active ingredients. There's no good occlusive ingredients in here. It's a basic, I think it's aloe leaf juice is the base of this. So you might get some, I don't know, redness relief from this, but that's about it. Don't expect any extra moisture from this. Sat on my skin, it never absorbed in my, into my skin. It felt like I was using almost like the Glow Recipes watermelon jelly mask. It felt like that, but it never absorbed into the skin. It was, it's the strangest product ever. Not occlusive enough for me, just didn't moisturize. Yeah, I don't, even if you have oily skin, I just, it just doesn't sink into the skin. I just don't find, I don't see the benefit to it. So yeah, no go for me for that. And then another moisturizer, this is by Derma E. Derma E does have some great products. I do notice a lot of them do contain fragrance, but they do have some good efficacious active ingredients in them. But this night cream I was super excited about because it's called their Hydrating Night Cream and I have dry skin so yeah, I was excited to try this but this is so fragranced and perfumey and sometimes I can be okay with the fragrance if it dissipates but this just sticks around and this feels so heavy on the skin and not in a good way. I like a heavy duty moisturizer but this, almost like the Pixie, it just sits on the skin, it doesn't absorb and it almost like my face like I almost was doing this after I applied it I'm like oh my god I want to wash this off just had a tight feeling on the face I just oh and it dried down to almost like a matte finish it didn't make my skin look dewy yeah just did not like that it's a shame because when I put it on it initially the texture of it is really nice but 
the way it dries down is very odd and it just feels like heavy and I don't know, I just immediately wanted to wash it off. And then another moisturizer, another one I was really excited about. This is by Mizan. This is a Korean skincare brand. This is their all-in-one snail repair cream. So this is a very lightweight cream. And this does have really high reviews, but the thing with this for me, this was way too drying on the skin. It has denatured alcohol in here. And it's actually pretty high up in the ingredient list for a moisturizer. My skin just felt immediately tight after using this. As soon as this dried down, I just... I don't know, it felt like my skin was immediately crepey. Did not get enough moisture from this. If you're super oily, then you might get along with this, but for me, it just dried out my skin too much. And it's a shame because this, this jar is huge. There's four ounces in here. You get a lot of product for your money. I love, you know, snail mucin. I think that does great things for my skin. I love the Cosrx snail mucin serum, but that just, maybe if it didn't have a denitri alcohol in there, it would perform a little bit better, but yeah, too lightweight for my skin, too dry. All right, and then two more products while we're on the, the drying train. These were also super drying on my skin. Another one with denatured alcohol was the Saturday Skin, what are you called? You're the Rub-A-Dub Refining Peel Gel. This is a wash-off mask that I guess is supposed to brighten the skin because there is some, there's like a physical exfoliant in this. It's kind of, it has like a grainy texture, but another one that has alcohol very high up on the ingredient list and it smells like a straight bottle of rubbing alcohol. So the content in here must be pretty high. I know I can accept alcohol in a product if it's lower down in the ingredient list. I know it's supposed to dry ingredients in, but sometimes with my dry skin, it's a little bit too much. But I had to pack on the moisturizer after using this. It immediately dried out my skin and it irritated my skin too. I, I instantly felt, I feel like I have like irritation around my nose. I immediately felt stinging around my nose and I had to wash it off. My skin was super dry and sucked the life out of my skin. So yeah no go with the Saturday skin. Let me know if you have a favorite product from them. I haven't, there's not too many products that really seem like I want to try. I have to admit, I think I was initially pulled in by the packaging with them, but looking further into the brand, there's not really great, I don't know, the price tag doesn't really back up the ingredient list. Like I said, let me know if there's a product from them that you really like. It looks like their Glacier Water Moisturizer. I think, I think people like that one. Let me know, but yeah. There's this Rub-A-Dub Peel Gel, it just is way too drying. I didn't, even if you have oily skin, I wouldn't put that on your skin. It just seems like it would be way too irritating. And another one that really dried out my skin is by Ole Hendrickson. This is their Fat Glow Facial. But I think because this is called the Glow Facial, I was just expecting a ton of moisture from this. I thought my skin would just be extra dewy after using this. But choline, which is a Chinese clay, is very high up on the ingredient list. So, and choline can be extra drying on the skin. It can be really clarifying, but for me, it was just way too drying. And my skin, it did have an immediate, like it imparted this immediate brightness. I remember after I washed this off, I was imp impressed by this. But later on in the day, my skin was super dry. I remember looking in the mirror and even underneath my eyes, like my eyes looked creepy. I was just bummed by this because I wanted like a dewy mask and this just was not it for me. And then last but not least is this eye cream by Botonics. Botonics is a brand that's sold at Ulta and they really do have some great products. I love their micellar water. I'm not really big on micellar waters. I know you're not really supposed to, they can be irritating if left on the skin, but their micellar water has like five ingredients on the list and it's just a base of like humectants and emollients. It actually feels like it's hydrating on the skin and it gets off my makeup. So I would recommend their micellar water, but this eye cream, it's just way too thin and runny for an eye cream for me. I just feel like it's immediately like off. I just feel like it doesn't do anything underneath my eyes. And for a drugstore product, this is pricey. I think this is like $17, $18 and you're not getting moisture from this. Like I said, it's just way too lightweight for underneath the eyes for me. Just kind of was a pointless product to me and I was really disappointed by this. So yeah, one of the worst eye creams for me for the year. That is the end of my best and worst. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was super fun. Let me know your favorites from the year, especially moisturizer. Let me know your favorites. Like I said, that's always one of my most favorite skincare products to try. I'm just obsessed. I love trying new ones and you guys always have the best recommendations. And also from Sephora, has there, has there been a skincare product from Sephora that has gotten you excited lately? I literally, I went through the Sephora website so many times trying to spend, I literally, I wanted to spend that coupon. I had that 70, what was it, $20 off 75. I was looking for a new moisturizer and nothing just got me excited. I just couldn't find anything I was really interested in. I'm looking at these ingredient lists, I'm looking at the prices, I'm like, nothing just seems worth it to me. So has there been a skincare product or brand from Sephora that has gotten you excited recently? 
the glow recipe that new moisturizer looks pretty promising I, I might pick up that it was in the, like the 40 something dollar range but let me know let me know your favorites and yeah thank you guys so much for watching you guys are the best and yeah see you guys in the next one see you guys